The current crisis has affected retail businesses in massive and unexpected ways. The industry I love has been impacted, with comic book publishers and the main distributor, Diamond, taking large hiatuses. Even with new material, local comic book stores are dealing with state and county regulations. I decided to reach out to stores across the country to see how they're dealing with things and how they plan to move forward. Today, I'm interviewing Ryan, the owner of Golden Apple Comics in Los Angeles, California, a state with some of the most strict regulations regarding social distancing. Ryan is a second generation owner of a store that's been around for 40 years. You're going to want to stay to the end of this episode as you can hear the events of modern day begin to literally impact the store. Thank you very much for joining me, Ryan. Uh, maybe as a way of sort of a level setting, for the viewers out there, could you just tell us a little bit about who you are, what your shop's about, you know, what, what makes you guys unique? Sure. Uh, so my name is Ryan Leibowitz. I'm the uh, owner and general manager here at Golden Apple Comics in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Um, we've been in business actually over 40 years. My father started it. I'm a second generation owner. I still work here. Uh, with my mom and my uh, my wife and some even sometimes my daughter or third generation um, so it's a, definitely a 100 percent a family business a traditional mom and pop brick and mortar comic book store of course we have a, a large online presence with our website and ebay and things like that as well um, but we've always been known for being here in hollywood having all the big signings with all the big comic book creators celebrities and uh, in-store events and promotions. So, you know, like I said, last year we celebrated 40 years, and uh, this year is a little bumpy with the uh, the coronavirus. So yeah, and I want to get into that, of course. Um, but you you do have a little bit more history than the average comic book store. I mean, uh, you know, for, 40 years is a long time at this point. That that's before there was any direct market uh, or anything. Um, and your father, I believe, had, was like. He's kind of a famous guy. Didn't he even appear in some Archie comics uh, a few times? Yeah. 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 Um, we actually, we all appeared in Archie at one point or another. Really? Um, yeah. When I was running WonderCon, uh, back when it was in Oakland, California, a little bit of my roots there, uh, one of my big guests was uh, Dan DiCarlo and, and George Glatter, um, the artist and writer of Archie for 50 years. I mean, George created Sabrina the Teenage Witch and stuff like that. Right. And I introduced him to my dad and then they hit it off and he started, you know, getting us drawn into to a bunch of different Archies. I mean, there was one Archie where there's several Archies where he would come to Golden Apple and Archie and the and the gang would talk to my dad, Bill Leibowitz, and be like, hey, Bill. That's how's awesome. How's it going in Hollywood? And yeah, it's really fun, uh, part of our history. Um, but basically, you know, look, I'm... I'm 46 years old. The store is almost 41 years old. So you can do the math there. I was born and raised in this, and I've met everybody from Stan Lee and Jack Kirby to people you've never heard of that do local comic books. Um, you know, and, and, and just almost every celebrity under the sun. I mean, Michael Jackson was a regular customer here wow. uh, for, for many years. And uh, we just get so many interesting people. I mean, all the people you would think read comics, uh, whether they're musicians or they're actors, um, they, they definitely walked through our doors at one point or had a signing here. And it's been pretty, pretty exciting and amazing uh, yeah. ride to uh, be on. Well, that definitely is unique. But of course, um, you, you, you brought up the challenges uh, that we're facing right now. And um, California, of course, has been uh, one of the more uh, strict states. So Overall, how would you say business has been over the last couple months? So beginning uh, in the mid-March, we got forced to close here in Los Angeles uh, by you know, order of the state and city. So we couldn't let anyone inside to shop. And you know, comic book stores are, that's a huge proponent of why people come in. So they can go through the, the bins and go through the walls and check out all your toys and statues and all your goodies, right? Yeah. So not having not having having not been able to do that for over two, two months now, it's, it's been detrimental to our physical brick and mortar store. But conversely, it's it's made our online sales go through the roof. You know, because people are sheltered at home, that's sort of their only outlet to purchase things. Um, so our web store and our eBay store 
have just been doing gangbusters, as well as the fact that comic book shops like Golden Apple all over the world have had to adapt to this new uh, this new normal, as I call it, and start doing live videos and live sales through social media. So we've taken to that platform. And, and that really brings me into the next area that I'm curious about in terms of like, what have you done that's uh, either new or or existing that that's been successful to sort of focus on keeping the business going? Like what, what, what's been working for you? One of the first things I did when this happened is I took, I did my first zoom. This is now probably my hundredth zoom in two months. I didn't even know what zoom was two months ago. No. And it was with a bunch of uh, comic book publishers and creators. And they said, you know, the number one thing is you got to engage your, your customers. You have to connect with them because they're sheltered at home and you're stuck inside your store with nobody there. I mean, look, I'm in an empty store. Right. And, you know, we found a way to engage with them as well as sell product. Um, I live my life by one man and one man only. And that's, that's Mr. Willy Wonka himself. And I literally like try to emulate him whenever I can. So when we would do conventions, yeah. You know, when we would do uh, San Diego Comic Con or WonderCon or any of the, the big conventions, I would always have a game, like a booth game, where you could win crazy, glorious prizes and there's mystery boxes and all kinds of crazy stuff. So what I've done is a version of that in three different ways uh, through the internet, through, through social media. One, I started real simply and I just did mystery boxes. So you literally got a box. I have one actually right here. Um, I took a uh, medium flat rate box. This is a big, heavy. It is big. Yeah, there's a lot in here. And uh, for $100 worth of stuff, well over $100 worth of stuff, you get this bad boy delivered to your house during the quarantine for 50 bucks shipped. So free shipping. Um, and basically, they're care packages. You know, it's yeah. the way I, it wasn't about making money, it was about getting product into people's homes, getting them to read comics again. And so it's a mix of trade paperbacks and hardcovers, vintage, uh, key, you know, uh, back issues, as well as brand new comics and some of the dollar reprints. So you get a lot of different things in there, as well as a coupon to uh, use at Golden Apple once we reopen. So that was the first thing I did. The second thing we did, which we actually just taped about, a, about 30 minutes ago, every Saturday, used to be every Wednesday and Saturday, we do something called the Golden Eggs Game Show okay. on uh, Book Live at one o'clock. And basically... What it is, is there's 10 slots on a wall and there's a value given to each session. And the top prize in each session is, is valued at least three to four times more than it costs to enter. And so everybody wins something and then one person out of 10 wins the top prize. So like today, uh, for 20 bucks, you could get in and someone won uh, the death of Jean Grey. I think it was X Men one thirty seven. It was worth like, you know, uh, I think it was like a seventy dollar copy for twenty bucks. And then everybody else won at least a twenty twenty five dollar comic book. And then in like the thirty dollar session, someone went away with a Black Panther number one, the Jack Kirby Black Panther number one, uh, so on and so forth. That's like a ninety dollar book for thirty bucks. And then I applied that same uh, concept to what we sell in the store, which you know, we have back issues, we have new comics, and then we have trade paperbacks and collections, right? That's a huge part of our store. You can see behind me, that's just racks oh, yeah. and racks, and racks of books, right? So I did something called The Wheel of Books. And I have to say it like that when I say it because it just rings off the tongue. And so basically it's the same concept, but different, where you buy a spot on the wheel, like, a, yeah. like an old timey wheel, and and I pick up a book and I say, and actually this guy won this one. I go, okay, She-Hulk, you know, this is going to be the next prize on the wheel. And you spin it. And when Robert Pate's name hits, he won this book. And the way it works is the top prize is, again, valued at three, four, five times more than the entry fee. The entry fees on the wheel of books are 20 bucks. And the top prize is like a $100 omnibus. Wow. And so, you know, for 20 bucks, when a guy just came and picked it up, it was the uh, Ultimates Omnibus. It was a hundred dollar Mark Miller book, you know, he bought for 20 bucks and he got to play a wheel and it was, it's very interactive and fun. And then in the gold eggs game, 
what's crazy is uh, my co-host, my and one of my staffers here, longtime staffers, dresses up as a character. <laughs> and we have a crazy amount of fun with that. Today he was Ben Grimm the Thing. He's been um, some other versions of new characters that we've made up, like the Green Diamond. He literally was Neil Diamond as a Green Lantern. That's amazing. So there's a good example of what's going on at our store. We're Is that curbside pickup or something? Curbside pickup only, and that's through the back door. So the fr we're located on Melrose and La Brea. Yeah. In Hollywood, we're directly catty corner from Pink's Hot Dogs. So you you legally can't park in front of our store. So you can't do what you would consider traditional curbside pickup. So we actually call it the, the comic book car hop service. We have a pop tent out there, Spider-Man's out there. We have a life-size Spider-Man signed by Stan Lee and amongst other people. And he's he's out there greeting uh, people with a mask. There's, there's uh, Ben Grimm back there. You're gonna have to make an appearance on this. Um, well, it sounds like you've done a lot of things to try to create a sense of the community and engagement, right. even if you can't do it face to face. So people are still calling, coming by, playing games with us through uh, Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, obviously they can go to our website, buy things, come, you know, click in store, pick up for free. They can buy things on eBay or they can get it shipped to them if they're if they're really needing to, uh, we can You've do You've got that. a lot of different channels there. And, and just remind me super quick again, like you said, like for the game shows and stuff, what was the main channel you were putting that out through? So we do the Golden Eggs game on Saturdays at 1 o'clock on Facebook Live. We do the Wheel of Books on Instagram, 2 o'clock on Fridays. I like to say weekends are for winning. So, you know, Fridays and Saturdays we have these games because – and this is a good transition. We used to do the other games on Wednesdays, but now we're getting new comic books again, right? right. So I couldn't do games on Wednesdays because we're back to real business. Um, maybe you've heard of this thing called Back the Comeback. That yes. is a huge campaign going on in our industry about comic book stores coming back into the fold and gaming stores. Um, so basically your local geek geekery spot, you know, is starting to get new product again whether that be the new Magic the Gathering set or the, that new issue of Marvel or DC or, you know, Funko Toys or whatever it is you're into that you would normally come to a comic book shop like ours. But well, we're getting product again. We have new product coming in the door every week. Um, and then one of these days we'll be able to open up to the general public. And Ryan, let me follow up on like what you're talking about. I'm, I'm just curious, you know, would you say that like um, in terms of the business that you are getting right now through these various uh, things, is it primarily, do you think, the, your existing sort of subscribers and your, and your existing customers, or are you, like, reaching new customers? Like, what, what, do you have any sense of, like, what the percentages Both. are there? Both. I mean, you know, our, our subscription customers, people who subscribe to Batman and X-Men and have an existing pull list with us, have been a godsend. I mean, that was the first people that saved us when the pandemic first started and we had to close our store. We immediately had to lean on them. They paid for everything in their pull box. They bought gift certificates to support us that they could use once we're reopened. Uh, it's been amazing. But then with social media, with these new games, with eBay and our web store, we're seeing so many new people, so many new customers coming through going, oh, I've heard of Golden Apple. You know, now I can go to my local store wherever I live, but I'm gonna check them out because now, it's sort of a level playing field. Um, That's you know, amazing to hear. Stores. Yeah, so would you say stores. that like um, having gone through all of this, uh, you know, and we're still going through it, of course. And I don't think any of us could have prepared in any way for for exactly what's going on. But is right. there anything that you would say that you've either learned or taken away from from any of this? That that's that, like things that you may have be maybe changing in any ways. Well, number one, I had to get out of my comfort zone and do things like this. Like I was, I was always behind the scenes guy. Um, and now I'm at the forefront doing live game shows, doing Zooms. You know, so the number one thing for me just personally was getting out of my comfort zone um, and, and just putting myself out there and kind of fumbling gracefully. Yeah. Like, hey, 
um, and just and using my creativity to create games, to wait, make things interactive, to get product to people at home while they're in quarantine and, and, and keep comic books relevant because you know, we, we weren't sure how long it would be until we got a new product. I can now say we're getting new product and, you know, things are looking up. But a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't say that. And I was worried that if this goes on any longer, people are just going to say, well, I haven't gone with, with, without, I've gone without comics for a few months now. I could probably live without them for a while, you know, and not come back. But we're seeing quite the opposite of that. Oh, clobbering time. It's clobbering time. <laughs> That's hey, great. How you doing? That's Thanks. great. Thanks for doing this interview with us today. We appreciate it. The voice. <laughs> you know, I also got I got a wig thing. It's in the back, though. I uh, we just saw the mystery box. I got the one. Nice. All the way from Yancey Street, Yancey ladies and gentlemen. Street. All the way from Yancey Street, dealing with those kids. The idol of millions. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a lot of fun here. Uh, my, you know, just my staff is my family. Like we're we're. That's we're just we're sticking together and and we're we're making it fun we're making it interactive we're playing games we're selling mystery boxes and then one of these days we'll open up for real yeah, but we're not rushing to do that i think for safety reasons number one uh for my staff for myself for my mother who i live at home with you know like i'm not you know i i don't want to i don't want anyone to get sick so right. we're gonna keep it you know, simple. Follow the guidelines, step by step. You know, if, if we were more desperate, you know, if we were in a more of a desperate situation, I'd be rushing to open the doors right now. Thankfully, with our online sales, I'm, I'm not as desperate as I thought I might have been a couple months ago. And that's great to hear. That really is. You know, I mean, I love local comic shops. It, it's, it's the lifeblood. It's, it's the community and everything. We also received a little bit of money from some publishers we who did. stepped up like TKO and some other publishers have said, okay, buy it from us and we're going to give 50% of the sales to the store you would have bought it at. So we've been receiving checks from that. Uh, the Bink Foundation, which is, you know, if you've heard of Jim Lee doing all these sketches for charity and uh, creators for comics and yeah. even the Back to Comeback t-shirts. You know, a lot, a lot of that money went to the Bink Foundation, and we received a small check from them as well. Good. So, you know, every little bit helps. We've had customers buying uh, gift certificates, customers sending us seized candy today, a bunch of seized candy and popcorn. Uh, I mean, we're getting love bombed by our customers, um, you know, and and we're, we're going to stay afloat. And, and this whole idea back to come back is – we're here. We, we're coming back. We're we're going to be stronger than ever as a as an industry. Yeah, and you know, but unfortunately, there will be a lot of brick and mortar stores that won't survive this, and that's really detrimental and unfortunate. But I'm it's curious, a sort of related to all of this, you know, um, Diamond Comics made an early decision to um, stop distribution, um, of course, for the health of their employees and stuff like that. But right. also, it seems like that decision to stop accepting product and distributing it seems to have helped a lot of stores. Is that anything that helped you? Or do you think you would have preferred to keep getting uh, fresh material? I, I think they did. They made the right choice and I'm glad that they came back as quickly as they did. We were a little worried that if we went any longer without new product, like I said, it might turn people off to even coming back ever. Okay. Um, so I think it was the right amount of time. It was a couple months. Let's, let's pause. Let's put everything on hold until we know what's going on, what the situation is. So I think we played it right as, as an industry, and we're excited to be back. Um, I don't think it helped anybody to not get product, but it helped in the sense that if we get these large shipments of expensive bills that we owe Diamond Comic distributors, right, um, and we have no means of selling it, then that's detrimental. So... That's the sort of aspect I was curious about. How, how yeah, that, that would have been seriously detrimental had had we had to do that and withstand that kind of um, financial burden for what has now been two months. Um, but thankfully, we didn't have the product coming in, so we didn't have the bills. And now that we are starting to get shipments, they're small and they're starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think it's a nice gradual comeback. Yeah. 
Well, it seems like you've come up with some really innovative ways to uh, not just stay afloat, but potentially engage some new customers that I really appreciate you sharing. Like some I of said, I'm Willy Wonka, so I'm going to show yeah. you a little bit around the store. Uh, a couple of the cool things I have, um, and this is something you would normally see if you were able to come into the store. So we have a uh, life-size R2-D2. That's great. It's not just any R2-D2. If you get a little closer, it's wow. autographed, autographed and sketched on by some of the top people in comic books and entertainment and film and all that stuff. So he's got he's got autographs and sketches everywhere. The uh, couple other cool factors of the shop uh, would be behind me there. Also, that uh, Avengers poster back there is signed by the entire cast of the Avengers. I came here in a skit from uh, James Corden. Uh, looks like I got to answer another phone call. So I apologize. He walked, the thing left me again. We can wrap it up. I was just showing you around visually. I love it. This is where we do the golden eggs game. You can see the one through 10 behind me. So that's one session. There's three sessions. We just wrapped it up and starting to redo it for the next time. But, uh, you know, we got miles and miles of books and comic books in, inside Golden Apple, and uh, we're excited to get back to it. Um, as you can see, there's the new comic wall with nothing on it. It's kind of sad because we're getting such small shipments. And the other thing I want to show you is just like the front door is still kind of gated up. Gated up, yeah. Right? And, uh, you know, we're starting to hang. Well, shiny there. Sorry about that. We're starting to hang signs around you know like these are these social distancing wow. signs that marvel uh, made us probably oh, fence fund made one so we have and we have like a sneeze guard that we're installing and all that good stuff so we're we're, we're outfitting the store for sort of post pandemic shopping we're not quite there yet and we're also not really comfortable opening uh, especially since today there's a a riot down the street or or, or Hopefully not a riot. Maybe, maybe it's a peaceful protest. But I know there's a lot of sirens and a lot of stuff going on literally down the street here um, because of the, you know, the, the the situation going on in the world. So um, we're we're kind of in the epicenter here in Los Angeles, so. You really are, yeah, you're, you're very centrally first. located. We're gonna keep the door closed for a little bit longer. Sorry, I get people. it. But you can call us and, and help, and we can get you whatever you need in our curbside car hop. And you've also got your website, and you've got your eBay store. That's correct, goldenapplecomics.com. That's where you can find all the stuff. Yes, you hear that? That's yeah. another siren. We've heard about 100 of them. Dramatic. My brother well, keeps calling me to say, are you okay, are you okay, are you okay? Oh, wow. Uh, dramatic down day. Down but, the street. Ryan, thank you so much for sharing some of your insights and, and yeah. being so open and transparent well, about a, how your store is going. Here's another innovation for you. With, I'm looking. All right, we got a face mask with the logo. Brilliant. Golden uh, Apple. Got our Golden Apple face masks. Right? Very nice. Hey, okay. it's things that we need now. It's so weird. it's so hard to look into a Zoom and do things right. I, guess, <laughs> I literally can't even do it right. There we go. No, well, uh, that better. should be the new breathalyzer. Is like a, a cop just pulls up a Zoom and you have to like put on a face mask correctly. I'm just looking you, at you your can't camera. Do it right, you're going to the clink. Yeah. All right, I gotta get this. My mother's now calling me to make sure that I'm not dead. Thank you for your time. Okay. All right. We are Talk to you soon. Up. Take Bye. care.